I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's News Update. According to the Times of Israel, Israel's Channel 10 reported Tuesday night that American and Israeli officials were working to arrange a meeting between Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and U.S. President Barack Obama, at which a commitment could possibly be made by the White House assuring Israel that the U.S. will use force in Iran by June of 2013 if Iran doesn't halt their nuclear program before then. The report said the White House is looking to reassure Israel and reduce Netanyahu's concern that if Israel doesn't strike Iran, nobody else will stop it from attaining nuclear weapons, leaving Israel under existential threat. It also said that such a commitment from the U.S. would be designed to ensure that Israel would not attack Iran on its own. Channel 10 said that Netanyahu and Obama would likely meet at the end of September or beginning of October and mentioned senior strategist in Obama's re-election campaign David Axelrod as coordinating arrangements for the meeting. Israel's foreign ministry is protesting the European Union's inclusion of parts of the municipality of Modi'in on its list of settlements. Modi'in, which in 2003 merged with nearby Reut and Maccabim, is located in central Israel, about halfway between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. For the first time, the EU named parts of Modi'in on its list of settlements that are not included in the free trade agreement between Israel and EU member states, thereby making them ineligible for the import tax exemption. The foreign ministry said for anyone who deals in reality, there is not the slightest doubt that the Modi'in, Maccabim and Reut localities are an integral part of Israel and their future is not in question. The European Union issued a statement Wednesday clarifying that it did not place the entire municipality on the list, but rather only three zip code areas in the community that are just beyond the Green Line, referring to a small part of the municipality built on what was considered no man's land between Israel and Jordan from 1948 to 1967. Since 2004, Israeli exporters to EU countries have had to list zip codes and names where goods were manufactured. And under the EU-Israel Free Trade Agreement, Israeli products are allowed into the EU duty-free, but not products made in the settlements. Well, the Sacramento City Council last night voted unanimously to add Ashkelon as its 10th sister city. The issue had brought about protests from pro-Palestinian organizations and the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement, who told the council to reject Ashkelon saying Palestinians had been displaced from the city after 1948 and that Israel had engaged in ethnic cleansing. However, a counter-offensive was launched by Jewish and Christian organizations to fight for the sister city status. The Jewish Federation of Sacramento, together with the Jewish Community Relations Council, were among those who had mobilized the community to counter the anti-Israel protest, which they say was yet another attempt to rewrite history and delegitimize the Jewish state. Christians United for Israel was also heavily involved, with its members sending the council over 23,000 emails. Back in 2009, the Sacramento Council had named the Palestinian city of Bethlehem as a sister city, and at the time agreed to choose a city from Israel as well. The Sacramento Council said the sister city program is about building bridges, not about taking a stance in Middle East politics. The JTA reports that Moisha House, an international group focused on building communities for Jewish young adults, will be receiving up to $6 million to expand its programming. Moisha House is a non-denominational pluralistic Jewish organization that offers a rent subsidy and other programs designed to build communities and learning opportunities for Jews in their 20s. The funding was offered by the Jim Joseph Foundation, the Charles and Lynn Schusterman Family Foundation, the Licktag Foundation, the Genesis Philanthropy Group, and the Maimonides Fund. The Jim Joseph Foundation alone has offered a dollar-to-dollar -dollar match of up to $3 million rather, for funds raised by Jewish federations and individuals from Moisha House in the next four and a half years. There are 46 Moisha Houses in 14 countries, engaging more than 50,000 young adults each year. Chip Edelsberg, executive director of the Jim Joseph Foundation, said in a statement, With this strategic growth plan and the support of numerous organizations and individuals, Moisha House is positioned to cultivate even more young Jewish adults engaged in personally relevant Jewish learning and creating home-based communities for their peers. 
Jewish bike riders are expected to wrap up a 10-week trek across America Wednesday, where they raised money and awareness for sustainable food systems. 29 Chazon Cross USA cyclists began their journey in Seattle, Washington on June the 7th and made their way across the country after raising more than $120,000. They've stopped in 13 states to meet farmers, policymakers, rabbis and others to talk about the food system in the United States and the upcoming farm bill in Congress. Chazon, which means vision in Hebrew, states on its website that its vision is to create healthier and more sustainable communities in the Jewish world and beyond. The ride ends in Washington, D.C. at the U.S. Department of Agriculture, where the group hopes to present a petition signed by people across the country supporting sustainable food policies. And that's Shalom TV's news update. I'm Tisha Bader.